with M. Reese Everson Esquire. She's an attorney that wrote a book, You Don't Have to Compromise, The Babe's Guide to Winning in the Workplace. As a young girl, uh, my mother went through a foreclosure. And she went through that process and she lost her home, she lost her car, and just a, a lot of things happened to her. And she was involved in you know, a, a lawsuit with her job. Uh, she really didn't understand all of what was happening. And unfortunately, things happened and she didn't, you know, she wasn't in control of, of the situation. At 16, I realized that I never wanted to be in a situation where I didn't understand what my rights were what I was entitled to, and how to be you know, aware of the situation so that I could advocate for myself, represent myself, and stand up on my own behalf. Um, I realized at that time that knowing the law was very key for me. And so I knew at that moment that I wanted to be an attorney. Um, after finishing uh, Michigan State University in three years, I went to DePaul University College of Law in Chicago. I completed law school in two years, and I Unfortunately, it came out in a time where the stock, I mean, the stock market had crashed, uh, jobs just weren't plentiful, and so I decided to create my own law firm. I created my own law firm in downtown Chicago and began to take clients on my own and practice, and I enjoyed it immensely. Um, I loved advocating on behalf of people who couldn't speak up for themselves. I would say most of my clients were disenfranchised um, when I dealt with people from the inner cities of Chicago. Um, I started out doing criminal work, so I had a first degree murder trial. I had clients who were accused of armed robbery. I had clients who simply you know, owed the city a lot of money. They had five kids and they were on public assistance and couldn't pay it. And so what happens in those situations are you have people who are in need and they don't have the ability to advocate for themselves. And I was able to step in in that situation and speak up for them in ways that they couldn't have done for themselves. And I was able to make a difference and that is the best blessing ever. I went to DC, I had received an opportunity to work on Capitol Hill. And so I went out there, worked on Capitol Hill for members of Congress and um, now I'm, I'm currently transitioning off the hill into the lobbying, into the, into the private sector. Well, the book is another aspect of just the same desire to serve. One of the things that I realized as a young woman in the workspace on Capitol Hill is that you have a lot of young women, and people don't realize this, but majority of the staffers on Capitol Hill are young women. And so when you have a, a person in, in a high place of power, he's established, wealthy, and then you have a young woman who is very early in her career, she's not established herself, she may not be very, you know, come from an economic background, or maybe she does, um, a very wealthy background. Um, what you have is a situation where the young woman is put into a, a place where she has to make a decision. And when I was placed in that situation, I decided that I was not willing to compromise. And so not only was I not willing to compromise, but I said to myself, there's got to be tools for young women in this situation. Where, who do I go to? Who do I talk to? Because I made the mistake of talking to the wrong person. And it caused a lot of problems for me. And what I realized is that a young woman needs a guide. She needs a set of tools. And if it didn't exist, then you have to create it yourself. And so I created my own set of tools, just like when I wanted to uh, practice law and the market didn't have opportunities for me um, when I finished law school, I said, I'll create my own law firm. So when things don't exist, you just have to create them yourself. And so I created the book for young women coming behind me so that they can have the tools if they don't know how to deal with situations that may be you know, uncomfortable and um, they call their, their morale into question, this book will help them to, you know, just have a, a guide and a map for how to navigate the workplace. You want it and you got it. The hottest gospel entertainment variety show being filmed right here in the city of Detroit. So stay tuned for more of The Noise of Joy. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We are united in peace today, therefore we represent children of God. Let's give ourselves a hand for peace today. 
I bring you greetings from the United Communities of America. We are a community-based organization focused on the reduction of crime through the promotion of peace, healing, and positive change. I want to thank Reverend Wendell Anthony. I want to thank Dr. Jesse Jackson. I want to thank our wonderful woman, Joanne Watson. Let's give her a hand. Our queen who has led the path for us. God bless you. Um, I'm Pastor Ovella. I am the president and founder of the United Communities of America, uh, which is a organization that I founded in 2010 uh, after the Lord began to show me many things regarding violence across the country. We're a community-based organization and we're focused on the reduction of crime through the promotion of peace, healing, and positive change. We have had uh, the Students for Peace program uh, implemented in four schools. We did River Rouge. Well, we started with Romulus High School, then we went to River Rouge High School. The results were the same. The principal contacted me. We had no, we had no fights on the 22nd. The students were amazing. So what we tried to do is to continue to move forward with this program to get funding so we can expand it. Um, but even while we're waiting for that to happen, I continue to move forward. And Carver Academy is uh, just one of the most outstanding results that we had because the principal informed me that uh, on the, before he became, became principal of the school, 91% of the students had been suspended for fighting. 91% were suspended for fighting. So he comes and he begins to work on programs that would change the culture of the school. They invite me in with the Citywide Day of Peace and Healing. When we implemented the Peace and Healing competition, which is Students for Peace on the 22nd, the students participated, they had no violence on the 22nd. Today is also the Citywide Day of Peace and Healing here in Detroit, today is the 22nd. What do you think about that? Well, it's, it's, it's appropriate, you know, it's a time for healing. We have, um, and God promised if we would uh, turn our wicked ways, stop self-destruct, stop self-destroying, he would heal our land. And so we, we pray for healing and we also pray for economic reconstruction. I'm so glad you kept that ministry alive. It has been two years and thanks to you, you helped us to kick it off. Thank you. And so Thank we're two for, years in it. Thank you for being a long distance runner. Yes, sir. And the day is the 22nd and we're celebrating. There we have it, Reverend Jesse Jackson said it is appropriate and it is necessary.